Father Richard Holang, welcome to Profile. Thank you so much, Archie. Good to see you. Uh, it, it is absolutely our pleasure. Uh, force missionary missionaries of the of, of the poor, but generally just a force. I would say in Jamaica, uh, life of service to faith and to music as well. Uh, and today, first in a two-part series, which we're going to be reflecting on some of the work that you've done. 85 years old and still very active, not just in your ministry, but also with your music. How are you feeling after just having completed yet another production, over 50 productions, over 50 years of productions? That's right, yes. Uh, I feel, yes, it's been good. It's been good. It's been a, it's been a joy because I, I, I think life finally is, is in trying to create something beautiful and also to bring good news. I don't know if I've accomplished it, but I've tried. <laughs> and it's been, it's been wonderful, especially the matter of working with the poorest. You know, you've been leading missionaries of the poor for decades, helped about thousands of people. Now your work is in 14 countries across the globe, not just in Jamaica, and you've produced numerous musicals. Do you feel, you, you, said, you, you said a moment ago, you don't know it, if you've been um, successful at a particular kind of thing. Do you feel like you've been successful overall? I, I don't know. Fun, uh, successful might be a little bit strange. Um, what I'd say is that I don't think I've done enough. I'd love to have done a lot more when I look back. I could have been a, a lot more generous. I could have been a, a lot more effective and efficient. But, but I'm very happy that the Lord has used me for this purpose. And you still continue to be very, very motivated. Oh, very much, yes. I want to see the kingdom of God built here on earth so that people see the extraordinary beauty and power of the Lord's work. And to replicate that in any way would, would be a joy to my heart. What keeps you motivated? Christ. <laughs> Christ. Um, that's been the prime motivation throughout my life. Earlier, uh, studies caught my attention, but always at the back of it was, I've got to fulfill this life of Christ. If I say that I am a Christian, I can't simply say that I am. Uh, if you really love someone as I love Christ, what I try to do is to replicate his life as much as possible. I want it so much to be like Christ. I, I, I want to talk an, uh, about that and explore that um, for a second, because by, by looking rather at how you grew up, uh, let's talk about the early days, uh, your parents and how they raised you. Uh, my parents came from China and uh, I was born in Jamaica, so I'm first generation Chinese. Um, they came here because they were w pulling away from or, or, or scared of um, communism. And they, they wanted to be in a place of freedom. So they came to Jamaica to my grandparents, who actually were indentured servants they worked in the, uh, in the tobacco fields and uh, in the sugar, sugar fields and so forth. And then after we got independence and so forth, our forefathers, um, they began a business, a little shop, as is the custom of Chinese. And uh, they work hard. And um, this is in Richmond, St. Mary. And then uh, when my parents escaped from what would have been an oppressive life in China as communists, uh, they came to, the, to my grandparents. And little by little, they, they built up a, a life for the children that they had. There were four of us. Um, they, they loved the people in Richmond, St. Mary, they were so kind. 
Uh, I loved it because of the river that was across the road and the, um, the bamboo trees and the, and the stirring of the wind and which moved my heart. My mother was Buddhist. She brought us up Buddhist. We, uh, we learned to love plants and to, to really uh, investigate, meditate upon the, uh, the mystery of growth. You mentioned a moment earlier that you grew up in a Buddhist family. But That's just right. before that, you talk about the sort of passion for Christ. And I know that partly this was because this was something you encountered in school. Explain how you became, uh, how th that sort of conversion or acquaintance with Christ came about. D well, Jamaica is filled with music. Um, and you, when we were in the country, actually, we used to hear this singing of the poco the poco and the, the beating of the feet and the drums and we used to watch the lights in the dark night and found it very, very interesting and, 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 and amazing. And then when I moved to Kingston, I went to Alvernia, Alvernia Prep School, which was run by some Franciscan nuns. They told us a lot about Christ and they told that story with such ardent love. They, they were women in love with Christ, you know, and uh, I wanted to understand what are they loving so much. Then they would pull away during the course of the day just to pray. And uh, they would pray and they would say silence. Uh, matters like that that moved our hearts. And then thereafter, St. George's College. I, I want to talk a little bit about the days in St. George's College, but we have to take our first break on profile. Father Richard Holong of Missionaries of the Poor is our guest, and we're back with you after these messages. Mm -hmm. 